Hi, welcome to Clark Auction Gallery and a happy Paddy's week to you. This is Paddy's Day. We've had a great month. It's all of a sudden the uh, thaw has thawed out and there's lots and lots of merchandise and we have secured some of the best merchandise around this month. Here, for example, you've got some of the sterling we have coming up in the sale. It's a big Mexican set with a tray and everything. This is Tiffany. It's a very large set of Tiffany flatware. We have sterling jugs. This is a piece of uh, beautiful, rare piece of signed Tiffany reticulated silver, nice and heavy. This is Asian week in New York City, so and we're, we're already being uh, finance a lot by our Asian buyers, but there's going to be a lot of them in the city. So as usual, we have a lot of Asian. We have a, an ivory reclining gentleman here. We have a jade inkwell on bronze feet. We have a beautiful little jade snuff bottle there. We have an ivory incense burner there. And just mixed in here, we're not ready for the preview yet, so it's still sort of set here. This is all Meisen, a good grouping of German Meisen porcelain. Here we have a antique ivory crucifix, probably Latin or Spanish by the looks of the, the crucifix. And of course in, in true form at St. Patrick's Day we have some very rare and old Irish belique. The reason you know this belique is old is because it has the black label and it's also in Gaelic. Made in Northern Ireland, very delicate, I have no idea. They must have been drinking Guinness when they were making this, but what beautiful, beautiful stuff. And it's travelled all these years and stayed in good condition. So for all you uh, Irish collectors out there that want to spend the day after Paddy's Day at our auction, we'll try and get some Irish food. Moving along, we have some more Asian here. We have a very nice Asian jade inkwell here and other porcelains in there. This is a very nice bronze vitrine. It's a lift up vitrine. You can put your jewelry or whatever that you want to display into this case. Here we have another nice piece of Italian, what they call continental silver. It's 800 silver. Very nice with the bejeweling on it. And here, finally we found the missing. This is actually Fabergé. What a magnificent piece of Russian enamel silver. And you can see when you put it to the light, it is actually real. There's a lot of reproductions about, but this is fresh from in this upstate from an old man who's had it in his family for years and years, and has decided that Clark is where he wants to let it go. Anyway, here we have Genori porcelain. We have some mid-century porcelain here. Very strange. We like the uh, the funky as well as the valuable here. So we we taken a lot of different. For example, these are by an artist called Lipswich. Lipswich. These are bronze patinated figures. We have a nice bronze and marble clock here. Moving right along, we have a, a naval sword. This stuff here is Hungarian, it's called Zolzne. These are opaline glass urns with portraits on them. And here we have a, a KPM style porcelain plaque. And here we have some more and more porcelains, probably German porcelain birds, candelabras. We have you know, our usual sprinkling of services. We've got cold port, we've got Calden, we've got a nice Asian jar in there. We've got some country crocs. And here we have some lighting with a nice pair of silver plate column form lamps. There are Bouillot lamps down here with tall shades. That's a slight glimpse of what we have in the small room. We're still a bit topsy-turvy at the moment because we haven't set it up for the sale and it's not looking groovy. Uh, however, in a week's time, this will be all set up for the public viewing. Right here, we have this beautiful 18th century French two-piece mirror from a local estate, from a local Frenchman. Then we have this beautiful uh, inlaid sideboard with a big black splash, sort of Art Nouveau, turn of the century. This came from an estate in Nyack across the river. We have this marble bust. This came from Park Avenue, New York City. Just so as you know, we do get about all over the place. Bruce is gonna show you some magnificent art at the front, but this is a painting of which Bruce has one at the front by an artist called Guido Trentini. He's a very, we believe he's quite important Italian artist, but the piece we have at the front is very much like a, an American Thomas Hart Benton by an Italian man, but wonderful. This painting here, we have not been able to work out this signature down here on the right, but I, it's one of my favorites in the sale. It's very delicate and it looks like an artist, and it looks like a Mexican artist that's just gone out of my head now, so I'm not gonna get into it. Anyway, we have this Regency serve, or etagere, as is, came from Park Avenue Estate also. 
We have a pair of these 19th century marble top side cabinets from a Long Island estate. We have a beautiful pair of these. These are very decorative, the decorators will get good uh, mileage out of these. These are toll metal lamps on nice columnar form, wooden, wooden patinated stands. We've got a lot of Calders in the sale. Just up there you have two of the Calder prints. Uh, these are pencil signed and numbered. We have two more. We have the McGovern Calder as well. This is a beautiful, very finely carved uh, French 18th century bibliotheque. Nice condition. We have quite a big French community here in Larchmont. Here we have some our usual sprinkling of mirrors. We have carpets, dining room sets, <coughs> Asian furniture. And now I'm going to pass you on to Bruce Anderson, who's going to show you the rest of the stuff in the sale. Hi, Steve. Bruce Anderson from Clark Auction Galleries to continue Ron Clark's walk through the gallery. Here we have a beautiful Impressionist painting by Paul Loritz, a California artist, and this is Windy Days in California, or Windy Hills in California. Above it, a 17th or 18th century Italian or Spanish oil on canvas of really extraordinary quality from a Bronxville estate. And from the same estate, an English landscape titled Arundel Castle by Robert Samuel Gallen. Really a beautiful painting with figures walking along a path. And then into our mid-century section, we have several Charles Leviers from a house just two or three miles from here, including an unusually large one. And for mid-century furniture and decorations, we have a five-piece parlor set by an uh, Austrian secessionist, possibly by Joseph Hoffman. The chairs are quite handsome. And a set of Norman Turner for Plycraft side chairs. A very nice early rosewood Charles Eames chair. Good original black leather. A little worn on the arms, but not too bad. An unusual pair of Danish teak and brass small lamp tables. Very chic. Some Paul Macabre furniture from the Calvin line. We have this cabinet, a very useful piece of furniture with fitted drawers. A real gentleman's dressing chest, I guess you'd say. And then from the same house, another Calvin, Paul Macabre Calvin group sideboard or server. Beautiful walnut, black leather doors, also fitted. Possibly a bedroom piece, actually. A mid-century onyx Italian uh, dining room table. Look at the grain on that onyx, like wood. Some Eames chairs, a little more contemporary, but nevertheless Eames. A very nice chrome, 70s, 1970s chrome and black leather daybed. And then the thing that interests me the most is this group of garden sculpture from an estate in Oyster Bay, Long Island, including the over life-size Diana, inscribed Udon, and with the Paris foundry. Of course, it's after the original that's in the Louvre, but a beautiful garden appointment. A wonderful patina. She's missing her arrow in her hand, but I think that's not so important. And a, uh, a pair of cherubs, a pair of bronze cherubs from the same garden, unsigned, but surely Italian or French, late 19th, early 20th century. Such a deco face on this one, on the little pedestal. And my favorite is this woman walking a dog, signed A. Boucher for Alfred Boucher, also with a foundry mark, a Barbedian. I think it's a stunning sculpture, originally for indoor, ended up outdoors, and it has such a great patina. And then a lead heron, plumbed as a fountain on a stone base. And from the same estate, a Bacchanalian bronze plaque of cherubs and merriment. Somebody will surely put that to a wonderful use in, their, in a home. Uh, wonderful quality and cast to the figures, very expressive. 
They seem to be drunk by the looks of it. And up above from the same estate in Oyster Bay, a 17th century continental, probably French tapestry with a lion in the center holding his prey. Some animals in the background looking on. And then on into our entrance, a more mid-century, including this acrylic or lucite console table, oversized. And two extraordinary pieces of Paul Evans burled wood and chrome. Cityscape is the series. An executive desk and a cabinet. Above it, a 1970s palm wood mirror. And back into the art, we have two very beautiful Eugene Spiker, both landscapes, impressionist landscapes, sort of tonalist paintings. This one below is the second one. And then above this 18th century French commode, is one of two, I know Ron, Ronan already spoke to you about the other one, Guido Trentino, out of a Bronxville estate, 1928. And another Italian landscape by Pio Solero. And we have, a, we have a wonderful selection of paintings in this next auction. Ronan will do the, the final walk through the weekend before the auction. We hope to see you at the auction.